Hey everyone, the name is Eric and Today I want to talk about the INFJ personality type. So the INFJ, introverted, intuitive, feeling and judging personality type. I want to say scratch that. First of all, I want you to think of the INFJ as an introverted and intuitive type because that is what the INFJ is first and foremost. As an INFJ, you might feel, <laughs> funnily enough, that you don't really relate to feeling in itself. You are not really an emotional person. You're not really a person that gets affected by or listens to or thinks about your own emotions. A lot of the time the INFJ is more of a philosophical type, an existential type. That means you often think about your emotions, you think about life, you think about death, but you think about it from a rational point of view. You want to understand what these things are and what they mean and what the deeper purpose is of these events. Why do people die? Why do people live? For what purpose? What are we all meant to do? What is the reason we are all here on earth. The INFJ philosopher is a person that primarily seeks to understand the world from an abstract point of view. You want to come up with an existential framework for what life is. The way you can understand why INFJs are called feeling types is because INFJs are often very preoccupied with morality and virtue. INFJs are, perhaps to an even greater extent than ENFJs or INFPs, concerned with being virtuous people. INFJs often want to set a good example for the world to follow. They have strong moral principles, a strong ethical compass, a strong system of how to act and what kind of a person to be. This kind of compass is developed strongly connected to the INFJ's philosophical framework. Because the INFJ often reflects on matters of life and death and being alive, INFJs often come to develop these kind of abstract principles, fundamental navigating principles of how to live, what kind of a person to be, and for what purpose you are supposed to live. INFJs can become fascinated with the topic of virtue, but INFJs don't rarely INFJs rarely attach emotional criteria to these virtues. INFJs don't develop these virtues because of their personal experiences or because of their personal feelings, but rather they develop it because they assume that this is the in line with the natural law or what this right and wrong or some kind of fundamental overarching existential principle. The INFJ's virtues can be seen in all ranges of their life. They, their decision making, their lifestyle, what they eat, how they dress. INFJs try to employ and use their moral code to explain all matters of life. The INFJ's existential pro protocol is there for one core reason and that is to help the INFJ navigate the real world. INFJs have an stressful relationship to extroverted sensing. INFJs are stressed by the real world and by the real events, the real actions that are happening around them. Decision making, uh, constant changes, interruptions, things that happen around you can cause you to feel drained or exhausted as an INFJ. Many INFJs avoid dealing with these kind of matters of life because they don't understand it or because they find it overwhelming. Often what INFJs do to cope with this is they use their kind of existential framework to anticipate what the world is going to look like and what the world should be. They use their own ideas and theories to help them navigate the real world. So in order to make it less overwhelming by being able to explain what is happening around you and all the things around you, parties, social events, and the people and relationships, it becomes more easy, more bearable to deal with these things by having a theoretical explanation for them. It's less overwhelming to deal with something if you can explain it. The INFJ A assertive subtype is an INFJ that has developed this kind of sound metaphysical system. They feel secure in themselves, they feel wise, they feel understanding of the world. They feel understanding of other people. They feel understanding towards relationship. 
And because of this understanding, they can deal with and navigate and handle these things naturally, effortlessly. It's easier for them to deal with the real world because they feel secure in themselves and in their body. They understand why they are here. They understand their purpose. And the INFJ T, the INFJ turbulent type, struggles because they don't understand it. They don't know why they're here. They don't know what the purpose is of their life or what they're supposed to do. The INFJ T is a seeker first and foremost. And the INFJ A is a form of Buddha at their very best. It's a person that uh, just has found this kind of clarity, this kind of wisdom that helps them navigate all aspects of life. And the INFJ A is a person that knows that even if they don't understand it, they accept it, they accept what they can't understand, they feel at peace with that the world will always have some mystery. They're not overwhelmed by experience. They accept and feel patient. The INFJ T turbulent type, the seeker, wants to understand these things, tries to find a way to live, find a virtuous way to live, but they, tr they second guess themselves. They doubt themselves. They feel, am I really a good person? Am I really doing the right thing? Am I really virtuous? Am I really uh, making the right decisions? I need to slow down. I need to take a step back. It's too much. It's too fast. I want, I, I need space. I need privacy. I need to collect myself to find some truth, find some answers, more security, more answers. INFJs are interesting types because when you compare them to say an ESTP, the ESTP is a natural doer. The ESTP just rolls with the punches of life. There is no uh, pondering, there is no thought to why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's conventionality, it's practicality, it's just quick decision making based on what's best in the moment. The INFJ is a far more sensitive type. The INFJ is very sensitive to the emotions of other people. While INFJs can be somewhat oblivious to their own experience and their own feelings, INFJs are highly concerned with the feelings of other people. INFJs do their best to, through rational means, address the feelings of others. INFJs try to come up with principles, lifestyle decisions, changes they can make to improve on themselves, to be better people for others. INFJs want to set a good example. They want to come up with just this kind of, uh, ro they want to be role models. The desire to be a role model can be very stressful for the INFJ because the INFJ can feel that they have to shoulder the expectations of everyone around them. They have to be perfect at all times for others. They have to show that they are just, that they are fair, that they are good people in every decision they make. The problem is INFJs are human, just like everyone else. INFJs will sometimes fall prey to their own emotions. They'll become weak, they'll become stressed, they'll become angry, they'll become upset, they'll become afraid. They'll have all these emotions. And often INFJs fail to address or recognize their own emotions until it's too late. INFJs can avoid their own feelings or try to deal with their own feelings purely rationally, but at times reason cannot recognize fast enough what emotions are and how they can confuse your behavior or your actions. So as an INFJ, it's important to take time to center yourself and to reconnect with yourself. Engage in an honest dialogue with yourself about what you are feeling. And then, once you've had that discussion, move to that rational decision-making process. Think about, okay, how can I address these feelings? What can I do about them rationally? What best are the best decisions I can make? That's often a better way because it helps anchor yourself in yourself and it helps you make clear decisions. Ideally, you want to do what's good for everyone. You want to be a good example, but you also want to be a human example, a real life person with real life feelings still doing what is right. A person that can be stressed, can be angry, can be upset, but will still choose to forgive. Well, she will still choose to make the right decision no matter how afraid. Don't be afraid as an INFJ to admit that you're afraid, even to other people, and but still proceed and say, I'm afraid, but I'm going to do it. I'm stressed, but
but I'm going to put push through. I'm angry, but I'm going to let go. And that's how you deal with it as an INFJ. So, this is the INFJ philosopher. philosopher. <laughs> and uh, if you relate to this video or if you're an INFJ philosopher, please share it with other people. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.